Welcome! This is our worship video for the fifth Sunday after Pentecost. We'll begin worship with our greeting. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. We confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us, and in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. You are great, O God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song. Raising my Savior. Submission, perfect delight Visions of rapture now burst on my sight Angels descending bring from above Echoes of mercy, whispers of love This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior Submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching, waiting, looking above. Filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior. my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long.
Our first reading today is from Psalm 145. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to all, and your compassion is over all your works. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your faithful one shall bless you. They shall tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power, that all people may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. You, Lord, are faithful in all your words and loving in all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. Our gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 11. Jesus spoke to the crowd saying, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say, he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The word of the Lord. I've worked a lot of different jobs in my life, and most of them have been customer service related. Uh, jobs like working the front desk at a Mountain Lodge and retail at Sears and JCPenney. I've been a lifeguard and a barista. I've seen a lot of different people in a lot of different moods. And you know what? Some people just can't be pleased. It doesn't matter what you offer or how much you try to accommodate them, they are determined to be unhappy. It's almost comforting to know that these people have been around for centuries. Even Jesus had to deal with these people. In today's gospel, Jesus talks about the people who cannot be satisfied. He says, this generation, right? So this is not a commentary on any specific age group. We don't get to use this verse to complain about baby boomers or Gen X or millennials. Jesus is talking about a group of people who have stopped believing, like the people in Noah's story, the people who are more concerned about being right, not the ones who care about God's work. You know, he says that John came preaching restraint and repentance, right? He was conservative. Jesus came preaching abundance and grace. He was liberal. These people rejected them both. But more than that, they complained. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. They're complaining that others aren't participating. But they aren't participating either. They're just sitting and waiting for other people to show up to them. I say it all the time, I'm gonna say it again, all things need to be put into a larger context, right? See, Jesus has spent this whole previous chapter, the last few weeks of the lectionary text that we've read, talking about what it takes to be a disciple. And Honestly, my sermons have felt like a list of bad news about being a Christian. But Jesus doesn't pull any punches. 
Being a disciple is tough work. It isn't an easy life. We know Jesus says things like, I didn't come to bring peace but a sword, and how families will turn against each other, and how people might hate you if you proclaim the gospel. I'm a preacher, and I signed up to preach the good news, not kind of what's happened the last couple weeks. So then we get to this reading. Jesus is calling out those who sit around and do nothing, those who complain that nothing is right, those who stand in the way of the work of the gospel. Which seems in character. But then he goes one step further. And he invites everyone to come to him, to come and rest, because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Except he was just saying that in order to be a follower, we must take up our crosses. Now, crosses are not light. They are heavy burdens. And while there are not exact records uh, for how crucifixions played out, one theory is that the prisoner just had to carry the cross beam across uh, their back. A yoke across their shoulders, if you will. So Jesus tells the disciples that they must be yoked to follow him. And yoked with a cross. But then he promises that his yoke is easy. The burden he requires is light. It almost feels like whiplash. But then we have to remember the end of the story, where Jesus did go to the cross. He carried the heaviest burden. He carried the weight of the world's sins, and then he died. St. Paul reminds us in the book of Romans that it's due to sin that Christ died. We, too, have died, but not because we're carrying our own sins anymore. We've died because Jesus died and lived again. And we've been made one with Christ through our baptisms. Christ died, took the major burden, and relieved us from it. Thanks to him, we, too, now live. So this yoke that Jesus asks us to put on, it really is light. This is gentle and easy. It brings rest from the burdens of the world because it brings true life. It may be tough to proclaim the gospel in the world, but it is not a burden. This is good news indeed. And even more than that, Jesus invites everyone even those of this generation, those who cannot ever be pleased, those who keep turning away, those who no longer believe. Jesus invites them to come to him as well, despite the fact that they're never pleased, despite the fact that they only complain, despite the fact that they're not doing anything. Jesus welcomes them into his fold. And so Jesus invites us to come, when we feel perfect, and when we feel imperfect, when we feel angry or happy or sad, whether we feel worthy or unworthy. No matter how we feel or how we act, we are invited to rest in Jesus, to release the heavy burdens of the world, to find rest for the soul. It doesn't change what Jesus said before. It can be hard to be a disciple. It can put you at odds with the world. But you were promised rest. You were promised a place where your soul will find peace. Jesus carried the burden. Yours are released. I am glad to preach this. This is good news. Come, find rest. Amen.
to join me in a brief time of prayers of intercession. If you feel so moved, the response to each petition will be, your mercy is great. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. We pray for the church. Sustain us as we share your word. Embrace us as we struggle to find our common ground. Lift up leaders with powerful and prophetic voices. Free us from stagnant faith. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the well-being of creation. Protect the air, water, and land from abuse and pollution. Free us from apathy in our care of creation and direct us towards sustainable living. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the nations especially the United States this Independence Day weekend. Guide leaders in developing just policies and guide difficult conversations. Free us from patriotism that hinders relationship building. Lead us to expansive love for our neighbor. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all in need, for all who are tired, feeling despair, sick, or oppressed. Take their yoke upon you and ease their burdens. Give your consolation and free us from all that keeps us bound. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive this blessing. As you do the hard work of being disciples and find rest within Jesus. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen.
Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.